Hey, you're in the cantina. I was out of commission last week due to a nice case of bronchitis, which caused me to lose my voice. But now I and my voice are back. Now if I could only find my old will to live, I'd really be cracking. So without further ado, pour yourself a drink and let's jump into it. It's time to detox on the rocks. If today happens to feel like an uphill battle, you're not alone. Here are a few stories of some real life people who got punched in the face by life. Then politely smiled and asked, is that the best you can do? Let's start with Moss and Tracy Hills. A Greek cruise ship called the Oceanus sank in August 1991 off the coast of Africa. On board were 581 passengers and crew. The sinking was caused by a ridiculous storm. Now, the captain goes down with the ship, right? Apparently, this captain did not get the memo. The storm got so bad, the waiters could not complete dinner service. Everything was moving back and forth. Cutlery and dining plates were going absolutely everywhere. So... What happens? I mean, you wait for some kind of announcement, right? No announcement came. Passengers understandably started to freak out. Enter Moss Hills, a Zimbabwean cruise ship performer who performed on the ship with his wife, Tracy. Moss was the lead guitarist and singer, and Tracy Hills was the bass guitarist and singer. How cute is that? So anyways... Moss and Tracy head to the bridge to find out what's going on. I mean, the crew should be doing something about something, right? They get there with a few of their fellow performers, including magician Julian Russell, and they see no one in the bridge. Everyone is gone. You heard me right. So what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what they did. They leapt into action. Moss himself called Mayday Mayday until a ship answered. Again, this is happening during a really scary storm. So while they were waiting for help, for rescue essentially, he and his fellow entertainers organized the chaos of increasingly panicking passengers, say that three times, onto lifeboats. The lead guitarist and leader of this ship, Moss, and his wife, along with two other performers, played music and sang, entertaining everyone until the very last passenger was safely aboard and rescued. That's right, Moss and Tracy stayed on board, refusing to disembark until every single other person had been rescued. I just got chills, and for some reason, this story is really choking me up. If you want to learn a lot more about these amazing people, I encourage you to check out Oceanosinking.com. The website will be in the show notes. From there, you'll be able to read both Moss and Tracy's direct accounts that they've written of the play-by-play of events. So often we see tragedy sensationalized. Not that that's a story that shouldn't be told. But what about when people step outside of their comfort zone? When people step outside of themselves and do something really incredible? Personally, I had never heard of this story before. So where's the movie on this? I say this is a script just waiting to happen. Up next, we let me put my drink down. Up next, we have the mighty Adam, Joe Greenstein. Joseph Greenstein was a Jewish strongman known as the Mighty Adam. His nickname came from the fact that he was 5'4 and 140 pounds. In 1939 Manhattan, Joseph was walking down the street and he saw a sign that said, No dogs or Jews allowed. Ugh. This sign was hung up outside a Nazi Bund, Bund meeting. He marched next door and calmly purchased an 18-foot ladder and a Louisville Slugger baseball bat. He proceeded to set the ladder up right where the sign was and tear that sign down, where there just so happened to be a Nazi meeting taking place. 
They saw this, and the Nazis inside ran out into the street to confront Joseph. The mighty Adam, Joe Greenstein, sent 18 of those Nazis to the hospital. Again, this guy is 5 feet 4 inches. I'm over 5'9", and I almost gave myself a brain aneurysm last week trying to open a bottle of aspirin. But what happened to the mighty Adam? Well, he got a black eye. That's it. Although he was immediately arrested. I know, but just wait for it. I promise it gets good. When he was brought before the judge, the judge could not believe such a small dude could wreck these Nazis so badly. The judge asked Greenstein, Mr. Greenstein, I don't think he had an accent, but I'm doing it for effect. Mr. Greenstein, these are serious charges. Do you have anything to say? Greenstein looked him right in the eye and said, Yes, sir, judge. Every time I swung that bat, it was a home run. Mike, drop, right? Ow! The judge then announced not guilty. And everyone threw their old-timey hats in the air. I don't know if that part happened. But listen, I want to find an old-timey hat and throw it in the air. Because, yes. (laughs) Get it. If Rudy is a movie, and it's an amazing, amazing, pick-me-up, feel-good, fight-for-what-you-want movie, I think this sit directly on the shelf next to it. I'm getting amped up. All right. (laughs) Let's do one more, and I love this one. Virgin Ujlaki is a 23-year-old Hungarian woman. Is because she's still around. She was in her home in Budapest in the middle of a training session when a burglar broke in. Scary, right? Well, turns out it was more scary for the burglar. See, Virgin is an Olympic fencer. Her practice session was a fencing practice session. Yep. She pinned the intruder to the wall and held him at bay with her foil, is what their long pointy sword thingies are called, and she called the police. The burglar was later treated for shock. Quote, It was good practice, as I have a competition coming up, she said. Damn, girl. Man, that makes me want to take up fencing. Or at least get, like, a boomerang or something. (laughs) Alright, it's time for What's in Your Glass. As mentioned, I had been down and out for over a week, and I'd been chugging hot tea like it's my job. There's nothing like a mug of hot tea. Well, unless you add a little oomph to it. The first tea we're going to make today, which I've had two, is a lemon tea. So the way I like to make lemon tea is grab a lemon, organic if you can, slice it up, pop it into a mug, and add water that's just below boiling. Add a tablespoon of agave nectar, let it all chill out right before you add a double shot of tequila. I recommend a nice reposado for this. Try Los Arango. It comes in a gorgeous square blue bottle. You'll know it right away. It's a glistening cube of joy. Now, it may not help your cold, but I can guarantee that your cough will bother you a lot less very quickly after this. Another one that's really nice is I adore a nice cup of mint tea. So let's say that you make your mint tea And I do recommend making it about twice as strong when you are adding a little booze to it. Something I like to do here is if you have any on hand or if you're running out to the store, grab some fresh mint leaves. It really gives it that brightness and also kind of makes you feel fancy. So next we add the ooh la la, also known as a shot of rum or bourbon, and you can throw in a little squeeze of lemon as well. Another one that I enjoy that's super relaxing, and then some, is a beautiful chamomile tea. Add a shot of vodka. Gorgeous combination is chai, tea, and whiskey with a drop of soy milk and stir with a cinnamon stick. 
Really, you can get as fussy as you want with it, but if you're a tea drinker already and you're looking to give yourself just a little something extra, play around with it. Most of the alcohol should stay true to form because you're not actually boiling it, you're just heating it up. I do recommend trying to stay away from adding just a white sugar, and this is really more for the taste than anything else. Again, agave is really beautiful. Um, if you eat honey, you could add honey as well, but you are going to get a little bit of sweetness depending on the booze that you're adding. If you have any flavored rum, a beautiful dark pineapple rum is really nice to add as well, and try to almost match up the colors. If you have a golden color tea, look for a golden or amber colored alcohol to add to it. A tea that my Nona loves is she'll make herself a nice black tea and then she'll add just a little bit of who's your daddy amaretto. It warms the cockles and then some of your heart. This episode has been brought to you by Self Delusion. Self Delusion. Because sometimes the sweetest lies are the ones we tell ourselves. Like, I can go one more day without washing my hair. No one will notice. Or, I'm gonna be okay. Self-delusion. Who's it hurting? There's nothing like a classic movie, is there? Especially the new classics. I've been re-watching some of them recently, going through my DVD collection, and I thought, you know, there's the way that I've understood the movie, but I'm sure there's a few other ways to interpret it as well. So I'm going to give you a few alternate titles of some of my favorite movies and see if you can guess what it is. Alright, one of my alternate titles for the first movie is... Fun with corpses. No shirt, no pulse, no problem. The mummy. Sun, sand, and a stiff. Any guesses? It's the cult classic and underrated stellar masterpiece, Weekend at Fernie's. If you haven't seen it, drop everything, watch it now. You'll thank me later. All right, classic movie number two. Alternate titles are Get That Kid Off the Escalator, Stanley is Legend, Not So Charmed, and Is That Ben Affleck? Any guesses? The classic, yet again underrated, Malrats. A little racier, and I do recommend making yourself one of those spike teas beforehand. It's just a shut your brain off and laugh kind of movie. The third one, alternate titles, are I am too old for this. Mm. 28-year-olds playing high school students. Suburbs equals safe and city equals scary. And Thor before the Hemsworth. Any ideas? The not very popular but gloriously directed by the same director who actually did the Home Alone movies, starring Miss Elizabeth Shue, Adventures in Babysitting. And the soundtrack is phenomenal. Again, a must-see. I think it's on Disney+, Plus, but they cleaned up the language. Well, that's the end of my drink, damn it, and the end of the show. Thanks for joining me, and just remember, being angry lowers your immune system for 6 hours, but laughing strengthens it for 24 hours, which means I need a lot more vitamin C in my diet because I am in a constant state of irritation population me. Salut! This has been a Cat Flap production in association with Not For Sale Media.